Pastor Axel welcomes you to Evangel World Outreach Center. Our weekly worship services are every Sunday at 12.15 p.m. located at 236 Washington Street, Boonton, New Jersey 07005. We are a small church with a big vision for northern New Jersey. Come be a part of our family. When he comes back, he will live a life of a king. He will live as the Son of God in all his glory. And we're going to rule this world for, with him for a thousand years. Hallelujah. You know the exciting time that we stand before? It's all coming together. And so Jesus Christ paid the price for us. And he paid the price for you. He paid the price for me. He went to the cross. To all our sins, the seasons, curse, anything that wants to interfere with our lives, he took on the cross. And then the devil rejoiced. The devil, he said, finally, I've got what I want. Finally, I can do what I want to do. But not so. Little stupid devil, he's dummy. He didn't know what would come next. Because they locked him in the tomb. Jesus Christ, they took him in the tomb. They locked the door. They put a big, big stone in front of him and sealed him. But you know there's a Holy Ghost power in the body of Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost power came into the tomb and the stone was just rolled away. Nobody had to roll the stone away. It just rolled away. And glory to Lord Jesus Christ. He ascended after 40 days in the heavens. In the same way he ascended, the angel said, Look not up, gaze no longer, for he shall come back the same way he came. He left, he came, he will come back. He will come back in the cloud of glory. The first time the rapture that's going to happen next will be on the cloud of glory. He will come on the cloud. And the church of Quindinger and I will be together with him. When the top lip hits the bottom lip, that's how quick in the great twinkling of an eye, boom, the church can be gone. And he said, let the people know, let the people know that I'm coming soon. Let the people know that I'm the hope to the world. And so we celebrate communion to be, to be partakers of the greatest, greatest challenge of life. To unite people with the Lord. And I want us to understand this here. Not to focus on results. When we witness for Jesus Christ. When you lay hands on the people. When the Holy Spirit tells you to pray for someone. Don't look at the results. Don't look at your capability. You just do what you need to do. Amen. The Bible says that some plant the seed. Some water. But God gives the growth. Amen. It is for us to see the growth in our interaction with the world, with the people out there. It is our responsibility to connect with the Lord. Connect to be with the Lord. Amen. And so this year, as the Holy Spirit talk, tells you, as the Holy Spirit comes to you and tells you, lay hands on that one, speak to that one, speak to her. Obey His voice. Because of what Jesus has done for us. We owe him, amen. We owe him. And so, Brother Matt, Brother John, Brother Mike, can we hand out the elements, please? Okay. Hallelujah. Can somebody hand out? Sue? Praise God. We need workers in the house. Amen. <coughs> workers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we do this in remembrance, remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He paid the price for us. He gave it all for us. Hallelujah. And so Jesus will come back. Amen. He will come back and take the church. Just hold a cup so the brain will all take it together. <coughs> Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. If you can stand, just stand for a minute if you can. And as we bring in the elements to you, just lift up voice of the Lord. As the Lord forgives.
give to you whatever is in your life. You can give it if there's anything in there. And I want to pray. You can repeat the prayer after me if you feel like. Father, we just come before you with thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you to be able to ask your forgiveness of everything that stands in the way between you and us. Lord, forgive us for our disobedience. Forgive us for our mistakes. Forgive us, Lord, if we judge someone. Forgive us if we judge ourselves. Lord, forgive us if we condemn someone. And sometimes we even condemn ourselves. We say things we don't mean, we just say. Lord, that's why we want to ask to forgive us all of our sins. Anything that separates us from you. Because you want to take that communion with the pure heart of your mind. Thank you for watching us. We just praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew 26. 23 and 24. It says there, as Jesus is saying, as I received from the Lord. The which also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it into pieces. He said, take it, eat this my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I want us to lift up the bread of the Lord. And I want us to thank the Lord for what he has done. Amen. That bread represents the body. The body of Jesus Christ was bruised, crushed, pierced, all for us. How would you like to go through something like that? We couldn't. We could not endure the pain, so he took it for us. Father, we just thank you that your son, Lord Jesus Christ, paid the price for us. The bread that represents the body of the Lord Jesus. We're so thankful for it. Take part, take us to the kingdom of God. And let us live truly as your children. And Lord, as we take this bread and our bodies, let it be an activation unto us of the heavenlies. Let it be an activation unto us of your glorious anointing. Let it be an activation of us of walking in the firm way with you. We thank you that they declare it over it and give you glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name, receive it.
talking about fasting, we're going to get through it, amen. In Mark, it says, some things only come out by fasting and prayer. Fasting, God, Jesus never said, if you feel like fasting. Jesus, when you fast, amen. So, amen. So I just want to take a few minutes to encourage you. It's that time of the year again. It's January, and for the 2019 fast, the reason that some of you may not have been with us last year, but the reason that we do this every year in January is because we want to start off our year right. We want to give God our first fruit fast, first of the, of the year, so that it sets the course for the rest of the year, how you're going to walk with God. So take this very seriously. And this year, we're doing a little bit of a different fast. It's not going to be a 21-day Daniel fast. It's going to be a 10-day fast. So I want to encourage everyone in here to do just 10 days. We can do 10 days. And if you, the Lord leads you, we can do another 10 days and another 10 days. It's up to you, between you and God. So here's what we're going to do. The fast is going to start on the 8th, which is this coming Tuesday. So Mark, you can sit down if you want, guys. And you can mark this down real quick. It starts on the 8th of January. Um, Tuesday and end on the 17th of January, which is a Thursday. So if we start this Tuesday, you have between now and Tuesday to plan it. Just take a few moments and say, this is what I'm going to do. This is how long I'm going to fast. Um, this is what I'm going to stay away from or what I'm going to give up. And this is what I'm going to um, spend time reading and praying in the same place at the same time. Take time to meet the sun at sunrise and to end your day meeting the sun at sunset every day. That's what I used to practice when I was younger. But here's what I also want to encourage you. Daniel did a holy resolve. He said, you can sit down, guys. It's okay. <laughs> he said, Daniel said, I will resolve to not defile myself with the royal foods of the court's that, uh, that he was taken into captivity in, and he asked the people, the, the officials there, if he can set himself apart and not eat the royal foods, but to test, he says in verse, in Daniel 1, verse 8, that's what you should mark down, because we're going to start with that verse. It says, test me for 10 days, me and my three friends, and give us only vegetables and water to drink, and see if we are not different from the other people. If we look frail and we don't look right, then we'll eat the royal foods. But if we look if we look better than them, then let us continue to be separated from the world. That's in other words, what he was saying is, I want to take away myself from this world. I wanna, the Bible even says, come among them and be separate. And, and set yourself apart because God can only use those who set themselves apart, who are not attached to this world. And then I also want to mention that you know, we got to devote and consecrate ourselves to God for 10 days. It's all it is, 10 days. So start on Tuesday. Say, you know, I'm going to do this kind of fast. It's between you and God. And I'm going to get up at this time. I'm going to spend time with the Lord this much. And you watch and see because when we fast, the word fasting really means humility. We come before the Lord humbly before him. And we say, Lord, here I am. I am broken. If brokenness comes in. And fasting returns you to, it's kind of separates you from the world and connects you to God. And don't we all want that in 2019? He's going to do something awesome in this church. So look what you see, as, as Pastor always says. I am believing more than ever before. I was reading about a, a, a thousandfold blessing. A thousandfold blessing is mentioned in Deuteronomy, where the, the Lord said he was going to bless his people one thousandfold as he promised. And then I was reading in another place in Ezekiel, it says that they were measuring, they were measuring with rod a thousand feet each time. I'm tired of ankle deep power. Don't you guys want more power? More power. So they measured it and they, the water came up to their ankles only. And then they measured another thousand feet and it went up to their knees. And then another thousand feet and went up to their waist. And then another thousand feet and they couldn't even stand anymore. They had to swim in the power of God. That's what he wants for us this fast. I just want us to ask him for more as you're fasting together with all of us. A corporate fast is powerful. It's not just you. It's all of us together. We join as a body of Christ. And it's not only our church. It's nationwide. There's so many people taking time out to seek the Lord, to ask him for more. Say, Lord, increase me 
Increase your presence. More of your presence in me. More of your power in me. More of your anointing in me. Just ask for more this time. Don't settle for what you have. Do not settle for less. Ask him for a thousandfold blessing in your finances. A thousandfold blessing in anything you need in this world. He will supply if he sees that you are asking him for more. Because he says all we got to do is ask. So together as a body of Christ, mark your calendars on the 8th and read Daniel chapter 1. Because when he ended up his fast, I would like for everyone, if you're able to, come together on the 17th so we can end our fast worshiping God because he desires for us to worship him daily as we were talking about earlier. So on the 17th, as we get together to worship and to thank him for the fast, the Bible says that Daniel, in verse 17, it says that he gained wisdom, he gained knowledge, he gained more understanding, he received visions and dreams from God. So if you want God to speak with you, I encourage every single person in here today, and those who are not, you call them and to ask them to join us in fasting, because after the fasting is over, things will happen, even during fasting sometimes, but trust the Lord to work in your life more than he's ever done before in the name of Jesus. And if you have any questions, you can call on us anytime. Call on me or the pastor. In Jesus' name, be blessed. children shall come to know you and walk in fervency unto the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the year where I receive breakthroughs beyond my comprehension, beyond my control. Amen? It all starts with the first fruit. You get the first fruit and you allow the Lord to do the, the rest of it. And so, last Sunday we heard the guidelines of breakthroughs. Amen? The first one was at the right time at the right place. And we're all familiar with the right time and the right place. And it says in, in, in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, not everybody that runs a race, that qualify for a race, will win the race. Not everybody who knows the things, of the wisdom is smart. It's not, I, I had a friend one time, a friend, he speaks five languages fluently. He used to work with me, a co-worker, he said, I don't understand, you know, I speak five languages fluently. He, he's fluent Chinese, he writes Chinese. He, he's he's a, a New York boy, he grew up in New York, he has nothing with China, has nothing with Oriental. His background is from Ireland, but he speaks five languages and he's fluent. When we went to Chinese place, he would order Chinese, he would look funny at him because he is so fluent in Chinese. And he's just like, I don't earn the money that I should earn with no five languages. So it doesn't matter what you know. If you're at the right place, at the right time, it opens up doors. But the third one that seals it is you have to do the right thing. The right thing. Amen? Esther, when she was, when she became queen, she did what? She prayed, she fasted, she went to uh, uh, her uncle and he said like, look, the, uh, the man, Mordecai, Haman, Haman wanted to kill all the Jewish people. And Mordecai was her uncle. And she said, uncle, what should I do? And he said, go fast and seek the Lord. And we all joined you together. And we know what happened. Haman was hung in his own gallop where he wanted to kill everybody. He, wanted, he hung on his own what he built for the Jewish people. So we know that when you do the right thing, it, the right place, the right time, but when you do the right thing, it will open up doors. And so doing the right thing, this, this, uh, gen this January 8th to the uh, 17th, if you do the right thing, then it will bring breakthroughs, amen. 
And Daniel 1, 8 to 17, you can read every study, every day the verse, study on the, on the, on the 8th, study Daniel 8, and see what the Lord has for you, what he wants to speak to every verse. And doing the right thing will show us God's glory, amen. The right place, the right time will not show us God's glory, but if you do the right time, the right place will show us God's glory. Excuses will keep us from doing the right thing. We all have excuses. We all talk about excuses. We all talk about throwing close to the Lord. We all talk about going to fast. We all talk about all kinds of different things. But sometimes it's just an excuse. Do what is right is not what is easy. Do what is right is not what is easy. Amen? If it would be easy, everybody would do right. If it, if it would be tempted and it would be right to, uh, uh, easy to overcome, there would be no temptation on earth. But it's always easy to do the right things. The truth of the matter is that you always know the right thing to do. The hard part is to do it. It's always easy to do what? To know the right thing. But the hard part is to do it. Apart from Christ, we can do the right thing. He is the one that gives us the understanding and knowledge of the right thing. We, we, all have sworn for, uh, we all have fallen short of the glory of God. God is a holy God and immense perfection. He wants His people. He wants His church to be perfect in our conflict with everything we do. He wants to be perfect in our walk with each, each other, with, in, in, in our walk in this world. His love for us and our love and appreciation for Him will drive us to do what is right. I always say like the Word of God tells us what to do, but we should do it because not the Word of God tells us. We should do it because we demonstrate our love to the Lord God Almighty. Amen. We want to say, God, I love you so much. I want to obey. I want to do things right. I love you so much. And that's why I live my life holding righteously before you. It will drive us to obey Him, spend time with Him, walk with Him, interact with Him. Ask yourself a question. Why should God let you go get, get into heaven? Why should God allow us to get into heaven? Why? Because we don't do what He asks us to do all the time? Because we're disobedient? We, we neglect His work? Why does God should let us go into heaven? Well, in Romans 8, 28 to 30, it says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. For God knew His people in advance, and He chose them to become like His Son, so that His Son would be the first one among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, He called them to come to Him. And having called them, He gave them right standing with Himself. And having given them the right standing, He gave them His glory. Amen? So we know that all things work together for our good. If you love God. So if we do things right, if we, if, if, if we do things right, it works together, it works for us, amen. If we do things right, it works in our behalf. It makes things happen beyond our control. It makes things happen because why? Because God works everything together for good for those who love the Lord and call and are called according to His purpose, amen. My purpose is not what I want. My purpose is not what my flesh wants. My purpose is not what I desire to have. My purpose ought to be that I do everything that God wants me to do. My purpose ought to be to please the Father before I please myself. My purpose is to honor Him before I do anything else because He is the importance in our life. Amen. Without Him, I'm nothing. Without Him, we are nothing. Without Him, we're just like a ship that's on the sea, being tossed to fro by the waves and have no sight or harbor, and we get so confused, distracted, and so mad about life, and we cannot get to life because we're so confused. But God has seen that He works all things out for our good. So for God knew His people in advance. He has chosen you. He has chosen me. He has chosen us. He didn't choose us that we can just live our own life. He has chosen us that we can just do our own thing. And sometimes we don't know what God has for us until we do what? Until we come and we fast. Until we separate ourselves from the other things around us. 
that God, I separate myself unto you, and I'm not going to defile myself with, 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 with food, but I'm going to separate myself X amount of time, X amount of days, and I take this time and just interact with you. And when you fast in such a way, you draw in the close of the Father, and all of a sudden the atmosphere changes, and your behavior changes, the sensitivity changes in you, because you're doing the right thing, and you're being directed not by your mind or what you want to do, but you're being directed by the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because we are his sons. For he knew his people, it says in verse 28. He knew his people in advance. He chose them to become like his son. Amen. You cannot become like the son of God. You cannot become like Jesus if you don't do things right. We can be in the right place at the right time. But if you don't do things right, we will not represent Christ the way he wants to be represented. And so it says here that we can become like his son, so that his son will be the firstborn of my, firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. We can come to God. God is saying today we have to live our life on our own, our own strength, of our own ability. We can come to God. Amen. It is a privilege to be come to God, to Jesus Christ. We can approach God's throne. It is a privilege and an honor that we can come to God and share our hearts, share our birth, share our life with Him, and that He can release unto us what is not beneficial for our lives and release unto us what is beneficial for our lives. Amen. And having called them and gave them right standing with himself, and having given them the right standing, he gave them his glory. The glory of God is in you. The glory of God is on us. As we can only observe ourselves by not being fast and strong and doing things better, we have to understand it's not going to automatically take us to the edge. If we do the right thing, it takes us to the edge, and things happen in a wonderful way. It's actually being in the right place at the right time and doing the right thing that causes us to receive the favor, the healings, and the blessings. Amen. At the right time, at the right place, doing the right thing, God's going to favor you. He's going to bless you. He's going to bestow healing on your body when there's sickness coming to you. You know why? Because when you do the right thing, He needs you. He needs you in the kingdom of God to work the kingdom of God and build the kingdom of God. That's why God allows us to sometimes get into situations. In the trouble, in the storm, he allows us to get in. He doesn't cause the storm, but he allows us to get in the storm because he wants us to get us to the place where we can be doing the right things. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes people they live X amount of years, a whole entire life. They're, they, they, they're believers. They love God, but they don't, do, they don't do the right things. So God allows them to go into a storm, into a problem, and let them come so far that all of a sudden they realize. I depend on God. I depend on His mercy. I depend on Him. It is God who holds the time. We say before how God holds all. He, he knows all the stars. He knows everything out of the universe by name. He holds everything with His finger, the Bible says. It is God who holds time and chance in His hand. He is the only one who can put you in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Is where all the great, great opportunities are. Do you need an opportunity? Do you need something for God to do for you? Then get to the right place. Amen. He knows exactly. The Holy Spirit speaks to us exactly what is the right place for us. Because He will place you at the right time, at the right place, where you will meet the right people. That will make the right things happen to you if you do the right things. It's not because of who we are. It's because of being in the right place and the right thing and doing the right things. That will give us the big break that we need in life. I'd rather be walking and doing the right thing and receive God's big break in my life, the presence of God in my life, than being just in the right place and doing the right things. I mean, being in the right place at the right time. For Christians doing the right thing isn't just an occasional moral dilemma. It's the way of life, amen. Oh, God has given us a lifestyle, a Christianity lifestyle. 
where he uses us, like I said before, where you just pray, lay hands on someone out in the street, you bring God's word and just tell him Jesus loves you. And the lifestyle that we ought to live is just be interacting, not in here, but more so out there, amen. Let the love of God, the power of the Holy Spirit can work through us and bring great results of God's kingdom. That's doing the right thing. How many people in the church, they just go to church, sit in the church at the right time, at the right place, but they never do the right things. We have to step up, amen. We have to step out of the comfort zone. The right thing isn't always popular. Doing the right thing isn't always the, uh, 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 what people expect us to do. People sometimes, they don't, they don't want us to do the right thing. They want us to cheat a little bit there. Tell them a little lie here. Do a little thing here. That's not the right thing. See, the people want to keep you away from the blessings of God. Amen. People, the devil will bring people around you and say like, Oh, don't tell the truth. You can't do this and you can't do that. Just twist a little bit around here and there. And you will not receive what God has for you. Christianity is a lifestyle. So number one, we need to do what is right biblically. The word of God tells us exactly what we need to do. Amen. It's not what I tell you. It's not what you what you're being told by others. It's what the word of God tells us. We have to understand that we need to do the word. Uh, we need to do exactly what the word of God tells us. In Matthew 4, 4 it says, But he answered that it is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of it, the mouth of God. Amen. That ought to be emphasized in God. I want to hear your word. I want to walk by your word. I want to live by your word. I want to live my life worthy of the calling. I want to buy by your word. Not what people tell me, but what the word of God instructs me to do. That's doing the right thing. Doing the right thing according to God's word is the right way to do right. If you take the Bible out of this world today, how do you base the moral standards? Somebody's moral standards may not going to be bystanders. So the only way we can have moral standards around the world is the Word of God. Because the Word of God never deviates. Number two, when you do the right thing, expect opposition. The devil will not just let you go, but praise God, we don't depend on the devil. Hallelujah. If the devil comes, we overcome us. He has no right to get to do anything to us because we are the blood of Jesus Christ. If we do the right thing, folks, on the Father's business, it doesn't matter what the devil will bring our way because we overcome us. We're victorious. We will succeed in all that we do because the power of God in us is greater than the power in this world. Hallelujah. So when the opposition comes, we're not going to get distracted. We're not going to get dismayed. No, we just keep on going. All the doing the right thing gets a lot of lip service, but when actually, but uh, when it actually happens, people usually get upset. If you look at Jesus, Jesus came to this world, did the right thing, and what happened? They fought him. They tried to stone him. They tried to hinder him from doing the, the, the mission God has given him. Could they interfere with it? Yes, could they stop him? No. Because greater power is in him. Hallelujah. Greater power is in you than the power on earth. Amen. You have a heavenly God given power in you that will make exceedingly abundantly able to do things that you cannot do on your own, but because the power in you will make it happen. So we need to focus on what is right. Because when Jesus came on this world, he revealed the wrong things. He told the Pharisees, look, you just a big show, but nothing to it. But the life that Jesus lived brought down less and changed his world. Number three, be prepared to pay the price. Understanding and choosing to do right things is accelerating at first, but sooner or later, there will be a price to pay. Jesus did the right thing on things all of his life and took and looked what the world did to him. The best way you can get into glory is to die as a martyr. When people come after you and take your life, that's the best way to get into glory. Because they will be shown from eternity to eternity. Amen. We should not focus on ourselves. We should not focus on how to treat us. We should not fo fo focus on what is what they do to us. We should focus on the Father's business. We should do what is right unto God. We should do what he wants us to do. 
Because what happened in our, in the history of the Word of God, when we did the right thing, opposition came, but the result was always greater than the opposition. If you study the life of Paul, how he came, and how he called Paul, he did so many good things. But every time he did good things, opposition came. He just wanted to share God's goodness. They threw him in jail, they stoned him, they did all the horrible things to him. But because of him, two-thirds of the New Testament is written by Master Paul. We live by his word, amen. The word that Paul wrote direct us. So his life didn't have just an impact on his life here on earth. His life impacted generations to come and even us today. So do the right thing because the outcome, the outcome of doing the right thing is out of this world. The outcome when we do right thing for God is out of this world. Of course, in our seal, the right thing sometimes we make mistakes, but it's okay. If you pray for someone, if you talk to someone, if you testify to someone, and it didn't work out the way you think it should, it's okay, you better make a mistake, witness to somebody and get rejected, or not being successful in that what you do, they're not doing it at all. Amen. So, we need to understand, we're in the right place, we're in Christ Jesus. He saved us at the right time, but we didn't do the right thing at all times. If you do these three things, it will produce breakthrough. If you only live a life of breakthrough, it will produce life breakthrough in our lives. If you do the right thing at the right place at the right time, you can twist either way, you can go backwards, forward, you can put it together any which way you want. If those three are together, it will produce greatness for ourselves God's kingdom because every time you read in the word of God when those three things came together breakthrough came in the book of Mark there was a man of the group of Bethesda and when the water waved when the waves and the water happened anybody was sick could jump in the man was at the right place at the right time but he could do the right thing he couldn't get into the water. But one day, a man came by, came by and called Jesus. He says, what do you need? If you do the right thing, you're going to be like Jesus. He said, what do you need? Let us stand. Thank you for listening to this week's sermon. Please check our website for church updates and notes on upcoming sermons. Have a blessed week.